They go from north to south or left to right across your radio dial, again wearing uh, blue shirts and gold pants with uh, blue helmets with the uh, what you call the Philadelphia Eagle Eagle emblem going across the side in gold. And for the Mole Maroons, they are in their white shirts with uh, maroon pants, white trim, and the uh, standard M on the helmet as we get this game kicked off. And for the Eagles, kicking it is Alvarado. And picking it up at the five yard line, coming near side is Chad Kelly. This guy went at the 22 yard line. And uh, making the stop for the White Eagles is Edwin Ray. And it's nice to see Chad Kelly back up to steam after getting that uh, little bit of a nick in that game and against Rock Island with that little hip pointer injury. Nice to see him back in the, in the flow. First and 10 for the Mole Maroons at their own 22 yard line. Just underway here from North Lake, Illinois. First round of the Class 6A playoffs along with Jerry Roberts on Mike Toquin. Wishbone formation ends in tight under center is the quarterback Jason Beard. He takes the snap, handoff, second man through. That is Chad Kelly. Kelly fights his way towards the 25 yard line. And Chad Kelly picks up about three yards on that play. Nice horse to go to on the first play of the game, going to Chad Kelly up the, between the tackles. A nice little three yard run. Three hard run or yards running there. It's gonna bring up second down and seven for the Mole Maroons at their own 25 yard line. It's like a 4-3 defense being shown by, mm -hmm. actually a 5-2 defense shown by the light and deep uh, Eagles on wishbone formation. Jason Beard to throw. Comes near side. He has his receiver. That's Nick Rainey across the 40 yard line to the 45 and finally tackled at the 50 and making the tackle for the Eagles with Glenn Holland. Kind of unusual molding coming out second play of the game with a nice little pass play, but uh, you know, Beard didn't even see that one land because he was flat on his back with a little bit of a rush there. Gain of 24 on the pass play. First and 10 for the Maroons at their own 49 yard line. Doing a little bit different. Nice way to start off the game with a first down. Wishbone formation now splits to a double wing, ends in tight. Jason Beard, the quarterback. In motion is Kelly, handoff, first man through. That is Hines, Hines first across midfield into Eagle territory to about the 45 yard line. Nice little run up in the middle again. Also making sure you cover that football with both hands. It's a little bit damp out there. Don't want to lose it. And that's Brad Hines first carry in the football game. He gets it to the 44 of Leiden as he picks up seven yards on the play. Already Moline, uh, boy, knocking, racking up a little yardage already, 34 yards. From the 44-yard line of Leiden, twin receivers far side. Split back offense for quarterback Jason Beard. He hands off first man through, and that appears to be the fullback. And that was Brad Hines on the carry, making the tackle for the Leiden defense was Ryan Fabry. I don't think he got anything on that play. Stacked it up right there in the middle. No gain on the play for Hines. That brings up second down, and, or the third down and three for the Maroons at the Leiden 44 yard line. Look for another play right up the middle. Ends in tight, wishbone formation. Now it's gonna split to a double wing of Alex Powell. And Alex Powell's in motion to the near side and Chad Kelly, handoff to Powell. As he goes between the tackles across the 40 yard line, should have enough for a Moline Maroon first down and he does. Boy, that play is just bread and butter for Moline all year. A Little bit of a cross buck action play right up the middle. And for Alex Powell, he picks up six yards and a maroon first down. First and 10 for Moline. Molina coming into the game. At the light and 38 yard line. Wishbone formation, ends in tight. Now Jay Molina in the game along with Chad Kelly on the wing to either side. Jason Beard. As Molina in motion, handoff first man through. That's the fullback, Brad Hines. He stood up and uh, brought down at about the 37-yard line. 
Initial contact made by the Eagles, Julio Alvarado, also in there, Justin McKay, the leading tackler for the Eagles this season. So far, the Eagles are stopping that first man that hits the line of attack, Mike, but the second man through the hole, there's a, there's a big hole behind him. He's getting some positive yardage. Brad Hines picks up two on the play. That's gonna set the Maroons with second down and about eight yards to go. From the Leiden 36-yard line, twin receivers split out far side, Rainey and Lynn. Offset eye formation. Jason Beard, the quarterback under center, takes the snap, looks to throw. His receiver's not there, a keeper, and he's brought down at the 33-yard line and making the tackle for the Eagles defense, Joe Johnson, to bring up third down. That's okay. That's not so bad, though. At least he made some positive yardage. He could have been tackled in the backfield for a loss. And for Beard, he picks up three. The receiver he was looking to throw was not on that side, and I'm surprised when he brought the team up to the line, he did not realize yeah. that uh, he didn't have anybody on the wing to that near side. Molly's taking a little bit of time getting the play onto the end of the huddle here. 7.24 left to go in the uh, first quarter of play. Scoreless Moline has had the football from the game start. Wishbone formation now splits to a double wing of Powell and Kelly. The single back is Hines. Kelly in motion. Handoff, second man through. That's Kelly between the tackles across the 30-yard line as he gets across the 25 and finally brought down at the 22. And making the tackle for the Eagles was Rodney Heichel. And another Moly Maroon first down. And again, it's the Plowboys up front. Plowboys number two, making them big holes for the second man through the line. Gain of 10 yards on the play for Chad Kelly. Nice to see him back. Sure Hopefully is. He can go the full game here. Wishbone formation. Now on the wing to the near side is Kelly. Ends in tight, Jason Beard, the quarterback. Handoff, second man through. And that is Jay Molina on the carry. Well, and get made to the tackle for the Eagles was Justin McKay. I don't think he got he, not even a yard on that play. We're going to call it no game. Second down and 10 from the Eagle 23-yard line. The Maroons driving here. Opening possession for either team. Here in the first round of the Class 6A playoffs from North Lake, Illinois. Twin receivers split to the far side. Offset eye formation. In motion to the near side is Nathan Lynn. Jason Beard, handoff, first man through. And that appears to be Brad Hines. And making the initial hit for the Leiden defense was Dave Latoria. That's going to make it third down and about nine. Looks like a gain of a yard on that play. Going to be maybe in four down territory here. <laughs> Unless Dan McGuire likes to go to for a field goal. A gain of one on that play for Brad Hines. The ball rests now at the 22-yard line of North Lake. That field goal's not uh, beyond possibility. Twin receivers far side of that field goal attempt took place. It'd be a 39-yarder. Offset eye formation. In motion to the near side is Alex Powell. Jason Beard takes the snap. And he hits uh, in incomplete. Intended for Scott Rice on the far side. And it's now going to bring up fourth down. And let's see what uh, Dan McGuire likes to do here. Rice trying to come back for that ball. Beard just put a little bit on, a little bit too much uh, oh, angle on that. He tried to come back for it and slipped and fell. Moley, no doubt, is going to go for it here, it looks like. 5.17 left to go in the first quarter. Scoreless football game between Moline and Leiden High School. Jay Molina brings in the play from quarterback Dan McGuire. It's fourth down and nine for the Maroons at the Leiden 22-yard line. Twin receivers far side. Offset eye formation. Jason Beard, the quarterback, looks to throw. Slips a little bit, throws. Pass Wide open. by Scott Rice at the 10-yard line, and he is tackled and making the tackle. First down. For the uh, Leiden defense was Brian Fabry. And a first down for the Bowley Maroons. A clutch play there. Yeah, there was about a, what, a 10, 11 yard pass play there. Boy, they're not afraid to pass the ball Game tonight. Game of 11 on the pass play. Now it's first down and 10 for the Maroons at the Leiden 11 yard line. They can get a first down without push, punching the ball into the end zone. Twin receivers near side, split backs, handoff. Brad Hines between the tackles, and he has stood up 
and uh, making the tackle for, or making the stop for the Eagles was again Justin McCain. Looks like if Moline tried to pass on that play, it could have been a reception because I didn't think they were covering up the wide receivers very well. Gain of three on the play for Brad Hines. Now it brings up second down and seven as Moline's inside the Eagle 10 yard line at the eight. Wishbone formation ends in tight. Jason Beard takes the snap, handoff, second man through, He's in. between the tackles into the end zone, touchdown. What a run by Kelly, right up the gut. And that uh, touchdown run looked very similar to the one that he scored upon to open up the scoring in the Moline Rock Island game a couple of weeks ago at Public School Stadium. Yep, just about the same kind of play just before he got nicked a little bit. Looks like he might be back to 100%. And that comes with 4.10 left to go in the first quarter. And now the Maroons will attempt the extra point out of the snap of Grant McCauley. Rather out of the snap of Josh Coleman. The placement by Jay Molina. And Lynn's kick is up with some pressure. Good. And the Moline Maroons take a 7 0 lead here at North Lake High School. From North Lake, this is Moline Football. Bergeron Appraisal Incorporated is located at 2129 16th Street, Moline. Specializing in residential appraisals certified in both Iowa and Illinois. Our qualified staff of seven appraisers can meet your residential appraisal needs. Bergen Appraisal Incorporated would like to congratulate the Moline Maroons on a fine season. The Letterman, lettering and graphics, I'll come to you. Magnetic signs, logo reproduction, storefronts, fast service, banners, trucks, team and fleet discounts. Call Ken Townsman, owner, at 755-5854. And he would like to congratulate the Moline Maroons and the UT Panthers on a fine season. Pizza Express, 201 West 2nd Avenue, Coal Valley, Illinois. Free delivery and carry out. Call 799-3100. Pizza Express congratulates Moline and United Township on a fine football season. Pizza Express, Coal Valley, Illinois. 799-3100. School, home of the Eagles, that were the Moline Maroons, open up with a 7-0 lead. 4-10 left to go here in the opening quarter. Moline, a, one of the, probably the most impressive drive of the season. A 14-play, 78-yard drive, resulting in an 8-yard touchdown run by Chad Kelly. The extra point by Lynn was good, and the uh, ball, or the, the drive took seven minutes and 50 seconds off the clock. And traditionally this year so far, this has been Moline's quarters that first quarter. And keep in mind, Lighted High School, much like Moline, they play a lot of two-way players. Yeah. A seven minute, 50 second drive like that, being on defense can really take its toll later on in the football game. Dan Burris to uh, re-kick it now for the Moline Maroons as the Eagles look to have their first possession of this football game and see what they do with it offensively. And light and strength mainly is their defense. The ball is picked up at the 25 yard line and drilled down at the 38 is Alvarado making the tackle was the kicker Dan Burris. And now we'll see if Moline's defense can get a little stiff. It's been uh, Little shaky in the last couple of weeks. We'll see what happens tonight. Lydon has a thousand yard rusher in Shaw on 168 carries. As uh, we have uh, the offense up to the line. The quarterback, Mealy, takes the snap. He pitches it back. That's the Shaw. Shaw comes near side across the uh, 40 to the 41 yard line. Yeah, so far. Well, it's, it's hard to tell. It's just the first play by the Eagles, but it's like Moline's playing themselves in a, in a scrimmage game. A lot of ground. 
Kevin Van Born in on the tackle for the Maroons. A gain of two on that play for Shaw. Again, Shaw will carry the ball quite a bit here tonight. On second down and eight from their own 41-yard line, I formation. The keeper by quarterback Got Healy, him. and he is drilled down at the 40-yard line and sneaking in and making the tackle for the Moline defense was Chris Davies. I think it's pretty hard for Chris Davies to sneak anywhere with that big frame of his, yeah. but he did get him behind the line. Nice play. And that will go down as a quarterback sack, a loss of a yard on that play. And again, Shaw, a 1,000-yard rusher for the Leiden Eagles in just nine games, much like Chris Beard did a year ago for the Moline Maroons. Receiver split right and left, I formation. And Mealy looks to throw. He does, a left-handed quarterback. Going far sideline, overshoots his intended receiver. And that was Holland, as it's now gonna bring up fourth down, and the Eagles are gonna have to punt the football away. Wow, and that didn't take long, just a, about a minute and change right there for that possession. So now, the Eagles send in their punter, and that will be Alvarado. Alvarado handles pretty much all their kicking duties, and he also plays offense, he plays defense, so again, Moline has one of these opponents yeah. that has a player that does his Mr. Does it everything. All. Back to receive, near side. Is Jay Molina. Also, there's the snap back to Alvarado. There's the punt. Oh, what a punt. A nice high punt and it's picked up at the 20 yard line and slipping through to about the 25 yard line was Jay Molina and making the tackle for the Leiden special teams unit was Chad Gatt. And I've noticed that the winds kind of kicked up a little bit here and Moline's going in the, into the face of it. If they can make some positive yardage in the next uh, 240, Mike, they're gonna have the win with them the next quarter. And even though Lida does have two-way players, uh, for those of, that uh, only go one way, their offense didn't give their defense much rest, just a no. minute 30. Yeah, just a minute and change. First and 10 for the Maroons at their own 25-yard line. They started their first drive at their own 22. Double wing, single back, Brad Hines, Jason Beard, the quarterback, in motion to the near side is Lynn. Handoff, first man through between the tackles is Brad Hines. And Hines is across the 25-yard line making the tackle. Again, Justin McCabe, one of the ta uh, captains for this Leiden Eagle football squad. And Je Justin's, he's a, he's a player, that's for sure. He's a gamer, and, and this is the game so far. Gain of a, a yard to the 26-yard line for Hines. Now second down and about nine yards to go from the 26. Twin receivers far side. Offset eye formation, Jason Beard, the quarterback, takes the snap, he hands off, that's to Hines. Oh. Hines is wrapped around and brought down by the Eagles, John Kowalshin. Kowalshin is a, a captain also for the Eagles, and he is being looked at by several Division I football squads, and we've seen it right there, why? Yeah, even though the Eagles closed closed range quick on him as he's trying to round the corner. The turf had a little bit to do with that tackle too. His feet just came right out from under him. Just a, a gain of a yard for Hines to the 27 yard line. Make that the uh, 28, so we'll give him two yards on that play for Hines. But it brings up third down and seven. And the Moulins, Moreau's have been converting on third downs. Beard looks to throw, he does. The pass is caught oh. at the 40-yard uh, line and uh, being brought down at the 41 and getting a first down for the Moline Maroons on the reception appeared to be Scott Rice, and that's who it was. Yep, Scott Rice. Across the 40-yard line to the 42, a gain of uh, 13 yards on the play. In the last couple of weeks, that passing game's been a little bit shaky back there. You know, Beard would kind of was running for his life in that Rocky game. Might have, might have rocked his confidence a little, but he's coming back with, uh, with a vengeance. And Moline is really converting on third down conversions here tonight. Twin receivers near side, split backs. Jason Beard hands off, coming near side. It's Brad Hines. Brad Hines is brought down at the 45-yard line, making the open field tackle. It's Holland for the Leiden defense. And even though it's not a big gainer, every play so far for Moline has been for positive yardage. As long as you're taking the ball down the field, you're doing all right. And all you have to do is uh, right there 
is gaining a three or four yards. There you go. And you're going to get a first down. That's what happened with Hines. He gains four there. It's now second down and six for the Maroons at their own 45-yard line. And Hines already eight carries on the football game. Yeah, 21 yards. Jason Beer brings the offense to the line. He splits Alex Powell and Nick Rainey to the far side. Offset eye formation. Handoff, first man through. That is Chad Kelly as he goes off left guard and gets very close to midfield. Yep, another three or four yards on that play. Keep the chains moving. And that's the end of our first quarter of play. It's Moline seven and Leiden zero. From Leiden High School, this is Moline Football. People are bringing you live. Welcome to Valley State Bank, where customer care is our number one concern. Valley State Bank is the benchmark for strength, stability, and resources in mortgage banking. Conveniently located in the Bettendorf Alpine Center, our mortgage department offers complete loan services, including conventional loans, bridge financing, second mortgages, construction lending, and much more. Our energetic management team and dedicated employees, along with a spirit of innovation, ensure a smooth transaction through individual attention. Call Valley State Bank and put our staff to work for you. Soho 2, 1416 48th Street Place, Moline, Illinois, 736-7646. The Quad Cities Alternative, Conventional Hairstyling. Congratulates Moline Maroons on a fine football season. Remember, Soho 2, 736-7646. The Quad Cities Alternative, Conventional Hairstyling. Adolphs and Sons, 4030 Kennedy Drive, East Moline, 755-8427. For the finest Mexican food in the Quad Cities. Adolphs would like to congratulate Moline and the United Township on an outstanding football season. Adolphs and Sons, 4030 Kennedy Drive, East Moline, 755-8427. A playoffs first round between the Moline Maroons and Leiden Eagles. And after one quarter of play, the Moline Maroons lead seven to uh, nothing. As the Moline Maroons rack up 54 yards on the ground, 48 through the year in the first quarter for 102 yards. And for the Leiden Eagles, they have just one yard of offense on the ground. From the 49 yard line for Moline, wishbone formation. On third down and two, handoff, and that goes to Jay Molina on the carry, and making the stop for the Leiden defense was Joe Johnson, and now the Moline Maroon punting unit comes in for the first time. No gain on that play. Well, the Eagles had a whole uh, change of possession there to figure out what they wanted to do on that play for defense. Stopped them right at the line. Mundo Boyer's in to do the punting. Back to receive for the Eagles. There you go. And there's a fake, and Mundo Boyer's coming near side. He's gonna be tackled at the 42 yard line. And making the open field tackle for the Leiden defense was Justin McCabe. And the Eagles are sitting in great field position at the Moline 41 yard line. I'm not sure if that was more of a fake or more of a high snap there. He tried to snatch that out of the air and couldn't quite make it. So from the 41 yard line, Leiden has it in Moline territory. Twin receivers near side, eye formation, handoff to Shaw and he stood up and driven down by Chris Davies and he's gonna be brought down for about a four yard loss. Boy, Davies is really playing big tonight so far. That's two big tackles so far. Loss of three for Shaw. 
And they mark it at the 44-yard line, so a loss of three on that play for Jermaine Shaw. And now it's gonna bring up second down and 13. Gotta hold him here. Uh, twin receivers either side, handoff, first man through. And making the tackle on the play is Eric Stewart. And on the carry, on that play for the Eagles was Bill McMillan. And he gets uh, very little gain on that play, maybe a yard to the 44-yard yeah. line. Yeah, he might have got a yard out of that play. Moline playing him tough up front. It's now third and long, third and 12 to be exact. Receiver split right and left. I formation, the quarterback Neely. He's only completed about 28% of his passes this year and he's looking to throw again. Left-handed quarterback comes near side. He's gonna be picked off, it is. No, dropped on the turf. And having a open shot for an interception was Patrick Wren. But uh, it's gonna bring up fourth down and the Lighting Eagles will have to punt. Patrick, Patrick, you could have been in the school stats here at Leiden, uh, that would have been the first interception of the year. Yeah, it would have, and unfortunately, the ball does uh, drop, and uh, for uh, Patrick Grant, I think he just uh, looked at that football just a little too much. Yeah, well, I think he saw a lot of green in front yeah. of him. Back to uh, punt is Alvarado, back to receive is Chad Kelly and Jay Molina at their own five yard line. There's the punt and Jay Molina lets it go over his head and the ball will roll inside the uh, 10 yard line and down at about the uh, four. Nice roll there. Takes over. Boy, this should be, if they can go all the way, this is going to take a lot of time off the clock. 9.51 here left in the first half. 96 yards to go to the goal line. For the Moline Maroons, they have it first and 10 at their own four yard line. And for Leiden, they've only run six plays here in the first half as they went uh, three and out. Full times. Yeah. I, I would like to, uh, I'll probably see uh, Moline to be a little conservative down here next to their own goal line. As we have 9.51 left to go, first half of play. Wishbone formation now, double wing. Ends in tight. Hand off. No, Jay, uh, hand off, first man through. And on the carry was Chad Kelly. And it was Pico on the carry for the Eagles. About a yard gain on that play for Kelly. Giving him 26 on uh, five attempts. Actually, that was uh, Hines on that Oh, carry, I'm sorry. Uh, as we just found out. Uniforms are already starting well, to get you look dirty. At 24 with Chad Kelly, 34 with Hines, and they get ruffled up. It's kind of hard to see. Yeah. Wing to the far side is Kelly. Offset eye formation, handoff, second man through, and uh, squirting through there and trying to get some uh, yardage. Was Chad Kelly. And making the tackle was Shaw. And I don't think he got anything on that one. Gain of a yard on that play for Kelly. It brings up third down and eight for the Maroons at their own six yard line. They need to get some yardage, whatever they can here to get away from the shadow of their own goal posts. Yeah. Moline has converted on the biggest part of their third down conversions here tonight. Double wing in the backfield, single back is uh, Bob Stroop. Handoff, pitch back actually to Jay Molina, and Jay fights for some yardage as he fights for that first down, gonna be about maybe a yard or two shy as he gets to uh, across the 13, or the 10 yard line to about the 13, and it's gonna bring up fourth down. Yeah, at least he did give him a little bit of room there for the punting unit to come in. Gain of just six yards on that play for Jay Molina, and it's, uh, like you said, Jerry, it, if uh, there was a benefit out of that, the punter, Mundo Boyer, actually it's gonna be Dan Burris this time, won't be standing on his own end line. Yeah, that's, in his own end zone. that's tough on the back line. There's a snap back to Burris, another high snap, and it's blocked! And it's the end zone for the score, touchdown for the Lighting Eagles, and making that uh, block and recovery was Dave Latoria, and now we're at seven to six. Boy, and that ignited the crowd here in a hurry. 
They were playing with fire on that play before, on the uh, punt before that when they almost had it blocked. Eagles come up with gold this time. And that comes with 7.42 left to go here in the uh, first half of play. And Leiden has cut the Maroon lead to 7-6. Alvarado in to attempt the extra point for the Eagles. Wow. Kind of like lightning, isn't Those it? High snaps are uh, coming back to haunt the Moline Maroons. That's two of them here tonight. Alvarado to attempt the extra point. There's a placement. The kick is up, and it is good. And we are tied with 7.42 left to go here from Leiden High School. This is Moline football. Total Fitness Center, 849 42nd Avenue, East Mole Lane, 755-9216. The Total Fitness Center, with Bob Horn and his staff, will get you back in shape and put you on a program that will get you where you want to be. The Total Fitness Center, 849 42nd Avenue, East Mole Lane, 755-9216. Would like to congratulate the Panthers and the Maroons on an outstanding football season. and the Eagles of Leiden High School as the Eagles have just scored on a uh, three-yard uh, punt block return scored by Dave Latoria, and we're tied 7-7. Latoria heads up play, picking that ball right out of the air after the block, running it in for the TD. High snap uh, led to that. That's uh, two straight punts now by the Moline Maroons that have uh, had, uh, what do you call it, hairy long snap. Yeah. And now, Alvarado set to kick the football off for the Eagles, back to receive. It's Chad Kelly also back there, Jay Molina. Alvarado with the kick. And picking it up at the 17 yard line, it's a free ball, so they're gonna pick it up, Powell does. And he's oh. jacked down inside the 15 at the 13 yard line. And making that hit again is Dave Latoria, 6'3, 215, and a junior. Man, get that kid on the sidelines. He is jacked up right now. And the Moley Maroons will start off this drive at their own 15 yard line. The starting field position for the Maroons, not the greatest here in the first half. Their best starting field position was their own 25. This time they started their own 14. Okay, even though you just gave up a touchdown, you know, don't get rattled. Twin receivers near side. Under center is the quarterback, Jason Beard. Split backs, pitch over to Ke Kelly as he tries around the corner and he is gonna be dropped down by Jermaine Shaw at about the 16 yard line. Picks up maybe two yards on that play. Eagles showing a little bit more speed than what Moline's used to in the Western Big Six Conference. That would have went around the corner for a nice big gain, but they close the gap quick. Chad Kelly just a gain of a yard. Second down and nine for the Maroons at their own 15 yard line. Jason Beard brings the offense to the line. Twin receivers near side. Offset eye formation. Beard looks the throw. Screen pass near side to Scott Rice. Is caught at the 18 yard line. He's brought down at the 20. Converging on the tackle for the Leiden defense was Alvarado. I think he had some help on that play too, but. We don't have that number on our roster. No. Well, they had two defenders closing on Rice uh, even before the ball was on, on the way there, so they kind of telegraphed that play a little bit. Gain of five, Jason Beard 
80% completion rate here tonight for 53 yards. He's four of five passing. Twin receivers far side, third and five for the Maroons at their own 20 yard line. Beard looks to throw again. He does. The pass is caught by Scott Rice for a first down at about the 25 yard line. What a clutch play that is for Rice Beard connection. Getting him out of a hole, give him a little bit of yardage. And Scott Rice, the leading receiver for the Maroons this season. As uh, Scott Rice this season has 19 catches coming into this football game as the Maroons gained six on that play there. Beard already going almost uh, 60 yards passing through the air. First and 10 for the Maroons at their own 26 yard line. Twin receivers near side, offset eye formation, handoff, first man through. That is the fullback. And on the carry, making as uh, McCabe makes the tackle, and on the carry for the uh, Maroons was Bob Stroop. That's a no gainer there for for uh, Stroop. No gain on the carry, uh, as now Moline has second and ten at their own 26-yard line. Have to check to see what's going on with Brad Hines. Twin receivers near side. Offset eye formation in the backfield is Kelly and Stroop. Beard looks to throw again, looks near side. He takes his time, he's gonna take it himself, and he's gonna be brought down at about the 27 yard line. In there is McCabe. Also in there was uh, Fabry. Gain of about, uh, about a yard, yard and a half on that. Gain of a yard for Jason Beard, sets up now third down and about nine yards yeah, to go for the Maroons at their own 27 yard line. Twin receivers near side, offset eye formation. The Maroons been pretty successful on third downs. Jason Beard pitches it near side. Here comes Kelly, Kelly across the 30 to the 35 yard line, very close to a Moline first down. Gonna be about a yard shy though, I think. Yeah, it's gonna be about it could be a yard, could be a little bit less than that. Depends where they spot it. It's going to be about a half yard shy of the first down. That's a left foot, right foot spot. And now with the way the Maroons have been uh, long snapping, you're almost in you're a almost debate. You're almost forced to, to go, yeah. Do you go for it or do you send in the punters? They're going to measure They're going to measure, first. yep. With 4.16 left to go in the first half of play, the Mole Maroons and Leiden Eagles tied here at seven. The Maroons went on the scoreboard first with an opening drive of 14 plays, 78 yards on a eight yard touchdown run by Chad Kelly. And then the Leiden Eagles responded with a uh, punt return, rather a punt block and return by Dave Latoria. And we're tied 7-7. Seven, seven. And it's fourth down. The Maroons send in the punting unit. Boy, this is going to be an adventure tonight. Kelly gained eight yards on that play. And now back to punt this time is Dan Burris. It's a snap that's going to Ryan out the punt. And there's the snap. And Lydon knows they can block it. There's the snap. There's the kick. It is up. And it is going to drop at the 35-yard line, picked up at the 20, and coming near down the far sideline and getting knocked out of bounds at the 40. And it was... And it's a 22-yard return to the 35-yard line, and that's where Leiden starts off first and 10. Well, at least we got that monkey off our back with bad, bad long snaps. Hopefully they got that problem ironed out. Actually a mark it down at the 39, first and 10 for Leiden in their own territory. Twin receivers far side, eye formation. Hand off to Shaw between the tackles. He's wrapped down at about the 41 yard line making the tackle for the Maroons defense was Eric Stewart. Stewart right there in the middle to plug the hole, gain of about two. Good crowd on hand making it up from Moline on the uh, far side of the football field in the stands. Gain of two yards on that play for Shaw. Yardage very tough for the Eagles right now. Second down and eight for the Eagles at their own 41 yard line. Receivers right and left. 
In motion to the near side is Eldridge. The quarterback, Mealy, looks to throw, overshoots his intended receiver, Holland, also in the vicinity, was Eldridge, but uh, the pass actually was not even that close. Yeah, you know, well, the last pass looked like a lame duck up there in the air, and it, we had a Moline defender just run underneath it and pick it off. That one he put a little zip on to make sure that nobody could catch it if it wasn't his receiver. Mealy comes into this game throwing about 28% of his passes. Tonight, he's 0 of 3. He'll get the one sooner. Eagles split receivers right and left, eye formation. In motion to the far side is Eldridge. He's on the wing to the far side now. And the quarterback Mealy looks to keep it. He slips on the turf and brought down. Tripping him up, up at first was Nathan Lynn. And finishing Mealy off was Kevin Van Boren. Yep, about a two yard loss on that play. And Mealy loses yardage back inside the 40 yard line to about the 38 as he loses two yards on the play. Field's starting to look a little sloppy down there now. The footing's kind of treacherous. And Mealy's been sacked two times here tonight. Mm. Back to punt is Alvarado. Back to receive is Kelly to the near side. Molina to the far side. The punt's going to go toward Molina. Another nice punt for Alvarado. Molina fumbles it. He loses it in the uh, lights. And the ball is going to be the Moline Maroons inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. And we saw last week Jay Molina had trouble handling a punt. Yeah, that was a nice high punt. It seems to be the high punts that's really bothering him. The wind is starting to blow a little bit out of the 222 left to go here first quarter of play the Moline Maroons have it first and 10 at their own 17 yard line we are tied here at Leiden High School 7-7 along with Jerry Roberts I'm Mike Koch we're glad to have you along here tonight as I know many of you are uh, listening back in the uh, Quad City area could not make the trip up and glad to have you again along here twin receivers near side receivers put to the far side single back handoff first man through and that is the fullback. And making the carry was Bob Stroop. As he gets across the 20 to about the 21 yard line. Stroop with about a two, about a two yard uh, gain on that. Just a little bit over two minutes left in the half. Make sure that you keep the ball at least until halftime. Be nice to get a score out of it too. Bob Stroop picks up three. It's now second and seven from the 20 yard line. Twin receivers near side, offset eye formation. Beer looks to throw, under some pressure. Let's off the pass, a flag on the play. Pass is caught by Nick Rainey across the 30 yard line, very close to the 35. Actually has Scott Rice on the reception, but is holding against Moline, that play's coming back. Penalties, 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 turnovers. That'll kill a team. And a minute 42 left to go here for the Moline Maroons here in the first half of play. That's too bad, too, because that was a very nice pattern and a nice reception on that on that play, too. So the, well, Mark, March, I should say, the Moline Maroons back to about the 10-yard line, it should be. That's where they do put it. Yep. 10-yard penalty against the Moline Maroons. It is the first penalty assessed to either team here tonight. Well, you don't want to have them, though. And now, now the Moline Maroons are looking at second down at about 13 yards to go at their own 10 yard line. Twin receivers near side, receivers split to the far side, single back is Stroop. Back to pass is Beard and under some pressure he lets the pass off and there's gonna be a flag, a late flag comes out now. As, grounding. Uh, it's going to be more intentional grounding. We'll have to see. As maybe Beard tried to avoid the sack. That could be because I think uh, the only people that could have uh, caught that ball was his uh, line. And that's a no-no. Intentional grounding. And it's going to be that loss of down here in high school. I believe it is. Yes. And that's going to back him up uh, half the distance to the goal. That should be about the five-yard line as Jason Beard just mainly wanted to get rid of that football. Well, if he didn't, he would have got tackled in the end zone. Right. So it's going to bring up third down and about, well, if it's inside the end zone, maybe potential grounding against Moline. And they do mark him off. 
to the five yard line, a five yard walk off. And Half that the distance to the goal. And that is a loss of down on that play too. So now you're looking at third down and about 22 yards to go for the Maroons at their own five yard line. The Maroons not playing very well here, second quarter of play. No. Twin receivers near side, offset eye formation. Jason Beard, the quarterback, he uh, hands off. That's to the fullback, Stroop. And Stroop fights for some yardage as the Lighted Eagles call timeout. We'll keep it right here with a minute 15 left to go first that, half. Yeah, that's still a lot of time. And minute, now the Maroons are going to have to punt it. Minute, and, uh, minute 15, you can do a lot of things, especially if you get another block kick. Stroop had about uh, a three or four yard gain on that last play. Up to the 10 yard line, a gain of five. So now the Moline Maroons are going to have to punt it. And this again, as you talked about, been an adventure. Oh, it is an adventure. It's a nightmare. Dan Burris will handle the punt here. And I see uh, Coach McGuire is out there talking to the officials about that last uh, penalty assessed his quarterback. I think uh, it's either that or oh, maybe. I think, I think it's more mainly the intentional grounding, but also could have been maybe on that one punt that was blocked. That could be. So now, Dan McGuire finishes up talking to his offense, or his punting unit, I should say. And there's our first... Uh, we made it almost a half, believe it or not. I believe it. That's how close we are to the airport, folks. I mean, we're not on the runway, but <laughs> it probably almost seems like it. So Dan Burris in the punt now, back to uh, receive back at the 45-yard line. We got to get a uh, name on that number. There's the snap to Burris. It's blocked again. It is blocked. Out of the end zone. Out of the end zone. Safety against the North Lake Lighten, or against the Bowling Maroons. Punting unit as uh, making the block was John Kowalshin. And with a minute nine left to go, the Lighted Eagles take the lead nine to seven as Kowalshin flew in, blocked the punt, and the ball went out of the end zone before he could pick it up. But they, the Eagles still pick up two points. And that must be the Lighted Eagles specialty. Yeah. Well, so far, the, uh, the entire Eagles offense is Moline's punting unit right now. Nine. Not a pretty thing. So the Eagles take the lead, nine to seven. And they'll get the ball back as well. Yeah. As following the safety, the Moley Maroons have to uh, either kick it or punt it from their own 20 yard line. And still a lot of time, over a minute to go. A minute nine left to go here, first half of play. And again, this almost looks like a microcosm to the Rock Island game where the Moley Maroons look so good in the first quarter. But yet, uh, Lida looks just as good here in the oh, second quarter. Yeah, yeah they're, especially their uh, specialty teams. This is uh, two times now in three weeks the Moline Maroons have had the lead and lost it uh, either in the second or third quarter. Yeah, and as soon as they start getting uh, you know, challenged a little bit, they're not answering the call either. That's the disturbing thing about it. So now let's see what the Moline Maroons opt to do here. Do they opt to punt or do they opt to... Uh, just kick it off at the tee. Now let's see, Dan Burris is coming out. Of course, he's their kicker and punter. He's going to put it. I think they're going to punt it. He's going to punt it. He's going to punt it. And it's going to be Caden uh, making the uh, punt return. Steve Caden, we finally got the name on that number. Now. There you go. And Caden is standing at his own 35 yard line. There's the punt by Dan Burris. And it's picked up at the 38 yard line. Coming near side is Holland into Moley territory. He's going to all the way. He's tripped up inside the 25 to the 20 yard line. And making the uh, touchdown saving trip was Dan Burris. Nice. And it comes with a minute left to go. 
Light it up 9-7 at the Moline 20 yard line. Right now it's 9-7. We got exactly a minute left here in the first half. Eagles are fired up and they're taking off like the plane's going out of here. And to think Leiden has yet to score a point offensively. That's right. They've went three and out. In fact, Leiden doesn't even have a first down and they lead 9-7. I don't even think the offense has positive yardage. Twin receivers near side, I formation. Pitch back to Shaw, comes near side. He's uh, brought down inside the 20, making the tackle, Grant McCauley. Timeout again by the Eagles. Eagles call timeout, that's their second though. One remaining with 53 seconds left to go. And Shaw is able to pick up two yards on that play to the 18 yard line. Shaw has over a thousand yards on the season. Averages over a hundred yards a game and here in the first half, he has not many yards at all. I've got him for about three yards. Yeah, so on the four carries. So he's having a, a tough minus one. way of going here tonight. Actually, I've got him for a mine, uh, or yeah, minus yardage. So the light in offense, no yards passing, minus one on the ground, yet they lead 9-7. It's the special teams that are uh, leading light in here so far. Twin receivers near side, I formation. Shaw, the tail of the tandem. Under center is the quarterback, Mealy. He takes the snap, handoff to Mealy. Goes between the tackles, but goes nowhere. Making the tackle, Chris Davies. And let's see here, does, yes they do. The Leiden Eagles call the timeout, their final timeout with 46 seconds left to go here, first half of play. And for Shaw on that carry, gains nothing. Yeah, but uh, the Eagles are trying to work the ball towards the middle of the field, Mike. They at least set up for a field goal if they can't get uh, any more yardage out of this. Alvarado is their uh, kicker. And he has made a couple of field goals this season. As Paul Carther, the defensive coordinator for the Maroons, comes out. As it's going to be an interesting third down play. What a crazy first half. It's just amazing. You look at Leiden, like I said, no offense, but they lead 9-7. Yeah. 46 well, seconds left to go. And that's why special teams are called special, I guess. That's right. They uh, stood up and they're given the Leiden Eagles nine points here tonight. And Moline, much like East Moline did here earlier today at Gately Stadium, scored on their very first drive and the uh, tank has run empty offensively. Moline had a nice 14 play drive to start off this football game with 78 yards and Chad Kelly took it in from eight yards out to give the Maroons a seven nothing lead, but Leiden has scored nine unanswered points. Misdirection, option pass, incomplete and uh, attempting the pass for Leiden was uh, Shane McCollum, and the pass falls incomplete. Little razzle dazzle here. And now it's going to bring up fourth down and nine from the 19 yard line. It looks like Leiden is going to go for it. Sure, why not? 40 seconds left to go as Mealy brings in the play from the sideline. Their coach is George Duffy, has a record of 17 wins and 17 losses. This is his third year of coaching at North Leiden. There's the pass by Mealy into the end zone and knocked down, incomplete. Got a penalty. And a flag on the play. Actually, that could be offensive pass interference because it looks like Holland came over to prevent Kelly from making the interception. Uh, that, I believe that's what it is. Moline's going to. And if they, it is, they'll just decline it. Yeah. Against, uh, Leiden. They sure did. With 34 seconds left to go here in the first half of play. And now Moline will uh, take this football and we'll have to see what they do with it. Mealy, by the way, 0 of 4 passing here tonight for the Leiden Eagles. Well, that's and now the referees are converging to see what the options are here. I, you don't want to bounce, move them back and give them another shot. There's just no way you want to do that. No, no. Nine to seven, Moline is trailing with 34 seconds left to go here, first half of play. And Moline will have it first and 10. I guess there may be 
where they're going to conferencing for field position. And the ball will be uh, turned over on downs to Moline. Okay, case so a loss of down on ah. that play. There you go. At the own 35 yard line is where Moline has this football. So it ends up being a 15 yard penalty against Leiden nonetheless. I believe that's her first. Yes it is, and now from the 35 yard line, Moline has it first and 10. Let's see what Moline does here. They're gonna split Twin receivers far side, Rainey and Kelly. They have Lynn on the wing to the far side with Bob Stroop, the fullback. Beard is gonna throw, he looks to throw, goes far side down the field, has the receiver, Kelly is caught at the 40 yard line. He gets out of bounds at about the 30. There wasn't a, a defender within 10 yards of him when he caught that ball. And Holland does make the uh, stop for Leiden, but for the Moline offense, it's a pickup of just about 30 yards. In fact, it's gonna be a pickup of 33 yards to the Leiden 32 yard line. And Moline calls a timeout after that play. And we'll keep it right here as we have 25 seconds left to go. That play there took just nine seconds. Not bad for 33 yards. So now from the 32 yard line, first and 10. Jim's Rib Haven, 1600 18th Street, East Moline, Illinois, 752-1240. For the best ribs in the Quad Cities, go to Jim's Rib Haven. Jim's Rib Haven congratulates the United Township Panthers on an outstanding football season. Pauper's Den, 1600 Crosstown Avenue, Silvis, Illinois. Come to Pauper's to meet your friends and have some great food. Pauper's Den congratulates the United Township Panthers on a fine football season. Pauper's Den, 1600 Crosstown Avenue, Silvis, Illinois. For the biggest hit in town, swing over to Slutter's Pizza. Our diamond is located at 637 First Street in Silvis. The visitor's dugout is open from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Sunday through Thursday and until 11.30 p.m. Friday and Saturday for dine-in or carry-out. Try one of our Fielder's Choice specialties like taco, garden, or barbecue chicken. For a warm-up, have a piece of Slugger's bread or a frosty mug of your favorite refreshment. Hope to see you after the game at Slugger's, located in Silvis on 1st Street, or call for a carry-out, 792-9100. Just now, right now, maybe the clock is the enemy, but hey, you know, what you can do is kick a field goal. That's that's true. And get you the lead at halftime, at 10-9, possibly. <laughs> there you are thinking again. Well, you always gotta think positive. I can't believe you still came up with all those pairings and everything from last week. I was very impressed. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. And we know next week that Moline will be home if they win. And that's just simply put. You can see the home with Flossmore or Barrington. And just, yeah, I guess, you know, Dan McGuire will say he doesn't care who we play. but As I long think, as we're playing. I think uh, a rematch with home with Flossmore. That'd be would, tasty. Would, would be pretty nice. From the 32-yard line of Leiden, Moline has it first and 10. Twin receivers near side, offset eye formation, 25 seconds remaining. Beard looks to throw. He has some time. He comes near side. Pass is caught out of bounds. by Nathan Lynn at about the 18-yard line. He's fighting for some more yardage at about the uh, 15. And now Moline's going to have to call a timeout as Lynn could not get out of bounds. Megan Stroop. And now it's a double wing of Lynn and Kelly. Kelly in motion to the far side. Beard looks to throw from the 15-yard line. He goes far side into the end zone. It's incomplete. In and out of the hands of his intended receiver. And that was Chad Kelly. And now we have seven seconds left to go in the first half. Moline trailing 9-7. I wouldn't uh, be surprised if we come back with that play again. So, uh, Beard is six yards or rather a six pass completion streak comes to an end. 
still over 100 yards. Looks like they're setting him for a field goal already. And here we go. And a field goal attempt now by the Mole Maroons. Hash mark to the near side. It's going to be a 42 yard attempt. It is blocked. No, Jay Molina picks it up. He's going to fight for some yardage. And he did not kick it. The Mole should maintain possession because they're looking third down. Oh, that's into the first half. Yeah. So the first half is over. And the Mole Maroons trail 9 to 7. And from Leiden High School, this is Moline football. Welcome to Valley State Bank, where customer care is our number one concern. Valley State Bank is the benchmark for strength, stability, and resources in mortgage banking. Conveniently located in the Bettendorf Alpine Center, our mortgage department offers complete loan services, including conventional loans, bridge financing, second mortgages, construction lending, and much more. Our energetic management team and dedicated employees, along with a spirit of innovation, ensure a smooth transaction through individual attention. Call Valley State Bank and put our staff to work for you. Pizza Express, 201 West 2nd Avenue, Cold Valley, Illinois. Free delivery and carry out. Call 799-3100. Pizza Express congratulates Moline and United Township on a fine football season. Pizza Express, Cold Valley, Illinois. 799-3100. Soho 2, 1416 48th Street Place, Moline, Illinois. 736-7646. The Quad Cities Alternative, conventional hairstyling. Congratulates Moline Maroons on a fine football season. Remember, Soho 2, 736-7646. The Quad Cities Alternative, conventional hairstyling. in the Quad City area is just outstanding. The Moline Maroons will kick this football off to start off the second quarter. Dan Burris will do the duties. The Moline Maroons go from north to south or left to right across your radio dial. The Eagles from Leiden High School. Their return men are standing back at their own 20 yard line. And there's the kick by Burris, a high kick. And it's picked up at the 20 yard line bringing it back to the 30 and being pounded on and dropped at the 32 yard line is uh, as we hear a plane go by and on the return for the Eagles was Alvarado. Now the defense from Moline, they've done a good job here in the, fir in the first half. So uh, just keep up the good work and the offense will come around. For a light and first and 10 at their own 33 yard line. Receivers right and left, eye formation. Again, Shaw's their uh, tail of the tandem. He's their leading ground gainer this year, over a thousand yards in nine games. As Amelia uh, looks to throw, he comes near side. He has a receiver and it's caught by Holland at the 35 yard line as the pass got behind the defensive back, Jay Molina, and Holland takes it down to the Moline 25 yard line as that's a pickup of 42 yards on the pass play. And that's his first completion of the night, one out of five. Holland is uh, the leading reset receiver for the Eagles as he has uh, seven catches coming into the football game and that's the uh, Eagles first, first down of the game as they have it at the Moline 25 yard line. Go, 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 go. And, and the keeper by the quarterback, Mealy, and he's gonna go all the way into the end zone. 
as he's, uh, no, he's tackled at about the two yard line, one yard line, somewhere in that vicinity. That was a great fake. He gave the ball into the line and the defense bid on that bait. Kept the ball, went around to the outside. Down to about the one. And another first down for the uh, Eagles at the one yard line, gain of 24. Big play. And Leiden, not able to pick up a first down in the first half, has two on two straight plays here in the second half. There's a handoff to Shaw. He's driven back, making the tackle to Scott Rice. And uh, Shaw may have lost a couple yards on that play. And a little bit of trickery by the Leiden offense. I mean, who would expect him to pass on first down for a team that runs the ball about 85% of the time? Yeah, I think, uh, I think Shaw lost a couple of yards on that last play, but the catch by Holland, that should be no surprise. He's a big play guy. As back to the three yard line on second down and goal for the Eagles. And that's uh, not the Eagle we're talking about. We're talking about the Eagles on the uh, playing field. High formation. Wing to the far side in motion to the near side McCabe. And uh, Mele looks to pitch it. He does over to Shaw. He's and in. he's into the end zone. Touchdown. As he hung on to the Mele, the quarterback, hung on to the football as long as he possibly could before he pitched it over to uh, Shaw. And Shaw takes it into the end zone for a score from three yards out. But the Moline defense, they weren't paying any attention to him on the outside there. They were just so intense on stopping that runner that they weren't expecting the pitch out. He walked in for the TD. And now Alvarado's in to attempt the extra point. There's the snap, the placement, the kick is up and it is good. And the Leiden Eagles have taken a nine point lead with 10-17 left to go here in the third quarter, 16 to seven from Leiden High School. This is Moline football. North Lake, Illinois, 10-17 left to go third quarter with Moline trailing 16 to seven as Leiden scores on a four play 33 yard drive on a three yard touchdown run by Sean, the option quarterback, Matt Mele, Mele. And now we get set for the uh, kickoff from Alvarado back to uh, Chad Kelly. And now the Moline Maroon offense has really got to get it in gear on this first drive of the second half offensively. That's right. They can't let the Eagles get any farther ahead of them. They'll fly away. Jason Beard, 7-9, passing here in the first half of play. There's the kick by Alvarado. And it is uh, free football there. Somebody has to pick it up. Chad Kelly does at the 24-yard line. And the ball is on the ball. And let's see here. Moline has it still Ooh, at the 26-yard line. And things are coming apart of the seams for the Moline Maroons here. Yes, they... they do have the football, though. Oh, boy. If you're a Moline fan right now, be breathing a sigh of relief. I There's can't believe hope. I can't believe nobody tried to catch that out of the air, Mike, on that on that kickoff. They let it bounce, and the, and the defense is closing on him. And on a kickoff, that's a free football. Anybody can pick it up beyond 10 yards. Twin receivers, far side, offset eye formation. Bob Stroop is still in there. I don't know what's going on with Brad Hines, but handoff to Chad Kelly between the tackles and he gets across the 40 to the 43 yard line and making possibly a touchdown saving stop was Holland, but not until Chad Kelly picks up a first down at about the 43 yard line, he picks up 16 yards on the play. That's no doubt about Holland making a touchdown saving tackle on Kelly. He had end zone right in front of him. He was going all the way. From the 43 yard line of Moline, twin receivers near side, first and 10. Offset eye formation. Beard takes the snap, handoff to Kelly between the tackles. He's across the 45 to the, about the 46. Making the tackle for the Lightning Eagles was Johnson as Kelly picks up two yards to the 45 yard line. Second down and eight coming up. It's kind of it's kind of funny how you can go through the same play in the same hole and make 20, 20 some yards and then two. Second down and eight. Twin receivers far side. Offset eye formation. Jason Beard takes the snap, pitches it back to Chad Kelly. 
We have a timeout by timeout Moline. Timeout called by Moline. And we'll keep it right here with 7.55 left to go here in the third quarter of play as Dan McGuire and the Moline Maroons want to make sure they have the right personnel on the football field for this punt because, you, as we talked about, they've been uh, really uh, tough to do here in this game. Yeah, and make sure that you got your maximum amount of men on the field because the way... Uh, the Eagles have been pouring in on that punter, Mike. It's like uh, they're sending 11 guys against five. You know, um, just as soon as the ball snapped, yeah. they're all over him like a blanket. And I don't know who their special teams coach is, but he does a fine job because uh, being able to get uh, certain players through the gaps, I, I, it almost makes you, it, it makes you wonder if they don't run that in practice time mm -hmm. and time and time again. And uh, that's the way they score a lot of their points. Well, this uh, Eagle team is, is a well-coached team because they're sticking with the game plan. And when they got down early, they just came right back. And like I talked about uh, at halftime, uh, Dan McGuire and the Moline uh, players were running uh, punts a lot in practice yesterday with a stopwatch. And that's, this is the reason why. There's a punt, high punt by Burris. He gets it off. And catching at the 42-yard line is Caden. He's across the 45, brought down at the 49-yard line. And Light is going to have excellent field position to start off this drive with 7.45 left to go in the third quarter. Well, if nothing else, that was a moral victory for the, the punting unit of Moline to be able to get that ball away. So from the 49-yard line of Leiden, they have the football. And their offense comes up to the line. Receiver split to the far side. High formation. Shaw the tail. He takes the handoff. He's into Moline territory across the 50. Finally brought down inside the 45 to the 44, making the tackle. Mundo Boyer also in there for the Moline defense was Eric Stewart. But Shaw picks up about nine yards on the play. And what's really, really scary, Mike, in this game is Shaw. Thousand yard runner didn't have anything the first half and they were still ahead. And uh, Shaw picks up eight yards on the play. Now from the 43 yard line of Moline, it is second down and about two yards to go. Hand, no, keeper by the quarterback Mealy across the 40, 35 yard line, steps out of bounds at about the 30. Looked like he stepped out of bounds at about the 33. Yeah. But they're going to mark it at the 30 and a pickup of 13 and a first down for Leiden. I think they're going to put it at the 25. They do put it at the 25, a gain of 18 on the play. Another big play. As uh, Mealy is starting to gain some yards from his quarterback position. I formation, receiver split to the far side. Handoff, second man through. That's Shaw. He breaks through. He's the gone. Tackles. He's going to go all the way to the end zone. Touchdown for Jermaine Shaw for Leiden from 25 yards out. And the Leiden Eagles go up 22 to 7 with 6.52 left to go here in the third quarter. I tell you what, this game is a mere game of that UT game this afternoon that we went up to take a look at because. They had something on the first drive, and then it was just all opposition after that. Same thing here. And for the Leiden Eagles, 
Just a three play, 51 yard drive. And, to, and here in the uh, third quarter, Leiden has only run seven plays, but they put up 14 points and they lead 23 to seven as Alvarado makes the extra point. And we have 6.52 left to go here in the third quarter. What an amazing second half for the Eagles so far. As the crowd here at North Lake, Leiden High School is into it, whereas the Moline fans on the far side they look like an oil painting. Can basically only sit and watch. Yeah. <laughs> oh As, boy. Uh, now the Moline return unit, kickoff return unit, comes out to the field. And now, with the Moline Maroons liking to run the football about three quarters of the time, that game plan is about to go out the window. Mm hmm And you know, I've, I've seen a couple of uh, really white jerseys on this uh, special team, Mike. I wonder if they're changing a couple of personnel out here, too. Uh, they very well could be. Back to receive, Chad Kelly. Also back there. Jesse Estelle, but all to uh, kick this off is Alvarado. Alvarado's got a leg, too. And the Moley Maroons. I guess it's now time for the offense to open it up and get some points here if they're gonna have any shot at uh, playing in the second round of the Class 6A playoffs next week. If the Eagle defense rushes the the ball like they do on those punt returns, it's gonna be tough for Beer to get some passes off. And Moline, if they would have to score, they'd almost have to go for two point conversions now because two touchdowns with two point conversions would tie it. Picking the football up at the uh, 25 yard line and being tackled at the 30 as a flag comes flying was uh, Jesse Estelle, but let's see what the flag is here. And they sort it through. And another flag against the Mole Maroons. Hmm. Holding. And the penalties have just been hurting the Mole Maroons big time here tonight. This is their fourth one? This will be their fifth penalty now fifth. for 38 yards. Penalties and miscues. Well, they haven't turned, well, they haven't. Well, actually, you know, if you're blocking a, if you're blocking a kick, that's almost a turnover, I would right. call it. So from the 20 yard line, Moline has it first and 10. We have 6.46 left to go in the game. There is still time to mount a comeback here. This could be the drive that does it, though. We have uh, just under, if you want to add it up with the fourth quarter, just under 19 minutes to go to put two scores up and have your defense Stop make em. a stand. Offset eye formation, twin receivers near side. Jason Beer, the quarterback, looks to pass. Backside. He's going to be sacked, and the ball is fumbled. And Getting uh, the football inside the 10 to about the five yard line, making the fumble recovery was the uh, Eagles, Kowalshin. And now Leiden is sitting in really good field position as uh, Beer's gonna be credited for a 10 yard loss on that play. And Leiden is looking at first and goal from the Moline nine yard line. Beer didn't even see that rush coming from the backside. They're sending everybody. From the Moline nine yard line. High formation. Receiver split to the far side. McMillan, the fullback. Shaw, the tail. Shaw gets, no, it's uh, McMillan as he goes off left tackle, making the touchdown saving grab was Jay Molina, but not until McMillan gets to the one yard line. Gain of eight on the play. And now is second and goal. Approaching six minutes to go here in the third quarter. This is basically the season, I think, right here on you this betcha. play. How bad do you want it? Here you go, I formation, second and goal from the one. There's a handoff to He's Shaw. In. No, actually into the end zone for the score was the keeper by the quarterback, Mealy, and now it's 29 to seven, Leiden. What a second half by the Eagles. 
20 unanswered points so far. And again, we saw this very same thing earlier today in the East moline Simeon game. East Moline controlled the first half for the most part or played even keel, but in the second half, things just fell apart. Yep. Alvarado into attempt the extra point. It is up and it is good. And with 5.55 left to go here in the third quarter, it's now wide in 30 and Moline seven. 5.55 left to go here. In the third quarter, Alvarado to kick it off. Back to receive, Chad Kelly. Boy, Moline's gotta be shell-shocked right now. Well, they've been outscored 21 to nothing here in the third quarter. Again, when you take on a uh, Class 6A school, there's no easy oh, schools. Oh, yeah. Leiden. Eight and one on the season. There's the kickoff. Chad Kelly picks it up midair, and he comes between the field, between the hash marks, and going to be driven back. But I think his forward progress should get him to about the 31-yard line. The Eagles are hitting Moline right now with everything but one of them planes that are landing at the airport yeah. next door. And now, Moline could be in a situation where it's either play for a win or play for pride at their own 32-yard line. The Maroons have it offensively. Twin receivers far side. Offset eye formation. Jason Beard, the quarterback, takes the snap, handoff to Kelly. Kelly slips and falls on the turf at about the 33-yard line. Making the tackle was Latoria for the Leiden defense. That's going to be a tall drink of water for the Maroons to try and come back, Mike. Don't forget this defense of uh, Layden has only given up seven points so far tonight. Gain of two yards there. Again, Moline did score on their very first drive of the game, a 14-play, 78-yard drive, and since then, Not scoring's been hard to come by. Twin receivers, near side, offset eye formation, Beard to throw under pressure, he's going down, down inside the 30 to about the 28 yard line. Boy, they just can't keep him out of the kitchen. And Jason Beard is not getting any time at all to get a pass off. Oh. Boy, they are just, they are just ferocious coming off that ball. Loss of four on the play, back to the 30. As the second time, Beer's been sacked. Last time he was sacked, he was hit for a sack and fumbled the football away. That led to Leiden's most recent score. Receiver split right and left. Beard to throw. Under some pressure is Beard, and the screen pass is set up to Kelly. Kelly gets across the 40 to about the 45 yard line. He uh, drops down. Give him a first down. A Moline first down. Boy, you gotta you gotta throw a little screen pass. That's a, that's a very nice call to try and keep the defense off your throat. Gain of 14 on the pass play to the 44. And now it's first and 10 for Moline. Twin receivers near side. Scott Rice and Nathan Lynn. And Moline's going to, well, they, I think they want to change the football here. Yeah, I think so. As they wipe off the football from the Moline side, replace it. Make sure it's a Wilson football now. <laughs> Otherwise, it can't be used. Yeah, and the reason why we're talking about that is uh, a little controversy in that UT game earlier that uh, Simeon was not using a Wilson football. Mm -hmm. But they got it straightened around and the game proceeded with uh, UT losing 22 to six. Offset eye formation, twin receivers near side, some movement along the line. And I think uh, that's Wentz on the near side that uh, moved just a little bit too soon for Moline. And that's their sixth penalty of the game. For about uh, 43 yards. 42, uh, yeah, 43. And back, Moline up five more yards, second, rather first and 15 at their own 39 yard line for the Maroons. A little bit more than three minutes left in the quarter. Twin receivers near side as Scott Rice with Lynn in the slot. 
Chad Kelly on the wing to the far side. Single back is Stroop. In motion to the near side is Kelly. And no. there's going to be a flag there. Well, yeah, there's a flag. As Beard goes to throw, he does. The pass is incomplete. There could be another, another flag, flag there. But the thing is, uh, that play wouldn't even happen, though. Yeah, we had two men in motion in the backfield for Moline at the same time. So it'll be a legal procedure against the Maroons. Oof. And again, things have just been falling apart at the seams from about the mid-second quarter. Yeah, well, I think the first the wheels fell off the wagon, now the horse is leaving. And there's a five-yard penalty against Moline. No, declined, actually, as that pass ball is incomplete for Beard. So that will not be a penalty against Moline. Only penalty is they lost a down. They lost a down. And it's now second and 15 for the Maroons at their own 39 yard line. I think, really, I think what's really gotten the Maroons shaken up has been those punts. I believe so. Ever since then, uh, things have just not been going their way. And it's affected the entire facets of the game. Receiver split to the far side, offset eye formation. Jason Beard looks to throw, has some time, sets up the screen, pass is caught by Kelly at the 36 yard line, coming going on the near side line, across the 40, inside the 35 yard line, brought down at about the 31 by Holland. As the screen play seem to be working for Moline here on this drive, and it's another Moline first down. The home crowd thought that Moline got away with an illegal block there on that screen play, but the officials didn't see it or it wasn't there. Gain of 32 on the play. First and 10 for the Maroons at the Leiden 29-yard line. Twin receivers far side, offset eye formation. Jason Beard takes the snap, looks to throw. He goes far side, passes, caught, no, incomplete, in and out of the hands of Chad Kelly. And now it's second down and 10 for the Maroons at the Leiden 29-yard line. Beard's been on his back most of this uh, second half. Actually, he's been on his back most of the game. That defense. Kind of reminds you of how Holman Flossmore played you in the playoff game a year ago in the second Very half. Similar. They threw everything but the chick, uh, chicken, I was going to say, ki <laughs> kitchen sink. Throw the chicken in there, too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> toward the uh, Moline quarterback. And in, in, in that game, of course, it was Jay Molina who was subbing for the uh, quarterback, Jason Beard, who broke his leg earlier in that game. Twin receivers, far side, wing to the far side, single back is Stroop. Shuttle pass ahead to... Chad Kelly, Kelly makes it to about the 25 yard line, making the tackle with Shaw. Well, the Maroons aren't laying down, that's for sure. They've got a lot of fight left in them, but I don't know if they got enough time. And they'll spot the ball down at the 25 yard line, pick up a four on that shuttle pass. And now it's second down, and or the third down, and about six yards to go for the Maroons at the Eagle 25 yard line. Receiver split to the far side is Kelly. Some movement along the line now. Rainey shifts over to the near side. Powell's on the wing. And some movement, uh, somebody moved just a little bit too soon before the snap for Moline on the offensive side. Oh, that's too bad. That was a, that was a nice play too. He would have got a lot of yards over there on the far side of the line. Ball start against the Maroons. This is a dead ball foul. The penalty will be assessed. At seven penalties against the Maroons, just three quarters of play. And a lot of them are false starts, illegal procedure, whatever you want to call it, against the Maroons. A lot of mental mistakes there. So the ball is now resting on the Leiden 30-yard line. A minute and a half to go here, third quarter. Moline trailing 30-7. to seven. And this is the best Moline added for a drive since that opening drive in which they scored on an eight-yard touchdown run by Chad Kelly. Twin receivers, far side, offset eye formation. Kelly, a beard under pressure, throws, intercepted by Alvarado at the 25-yard line, going down the far sideline. He could be going all the way. It could be a 75-yard interception. It, it is. A touchdown, and it is. And it comes with 55 seconds left to go here in the third quarter. And light is up 36 to 7. Wow. What a play. 
This is a tough team. Unbelievable. And Moline could be going down to their worst defeat in many, many years. In fact, the last time I recall Moline being down by 29 or more points, as Lydon calls a timeout, we'll keep it here, was the 1995 playoff game down in Pekin, Illinois, in the first round of the Class 6A playoffs, in which Pekin beat the Moline Maroons 40 to 8 in that game earlier today. Alvarado to attempt the extra point for Leiden, there's the snap, the placement, the kick is up, and it is good. And now, Leiden has a 30-point lead, 37 to 7. Leiden has scored 37 unanswered points. Moley led at one time in this game with four and a half to go in the uh, first quarter, 7-0. But ever since, it's been all uh, North Lake Leiden for the kickoff. Estelle and Powell also back for the Moley Maroons. There's the kickoff by Alvarado. Kelly will catch it in midair at about the 15 yard line between the hash marks across the 30 to about the 35 yard line where he's brought down and making the tackle for the Leiden Eagles on that play was Mark Mealy. Mark Mealy is the uh, brother of quarterback Matt Mealy. There you go. And uh, looking at it, they're both juniors, both uh, similar in size, so you got to. Say they're twins. The Mealy Mealy. Now from the 35 yard line for the Mole Maroons, first and 10. And we have Jason Beard still in a quarterback. Double wing in the backfield, ends in tight. Handoff, that is Bob Stroop on the carry. Okay, uh, Stroop is across the 35 to the 36 yard line again. We've yet to see Brad Hines ever since about the second quarter. Mm -hmm. Almost like a similar situation in the Rock Island game. With Kelly. Where we didn't see Chad Kelly in the entire second half. Gain of a yard on that play for Bob Stroop, second down and nine. Yeah, and uh, Hines had, was having a nice game going there. Yeah, he had about 24 yards on nine carries. Receiver split to the near side. Kelly on the wing to the near side. The single back is Stroop, handoff to Stroop. As Stroop goes off right tackle and fights for some yardage before he's brought down by Rodney Pickle. And at the 39 yard line is where they'll spot the football. And that's the end of our third quarter of play. And what a third quarter it's been for the North Lake Lighting Eagles as it's 37-7, the Moline Maroons trail by 30. Coming up the fourth quarter play from Leiden High School, this is Moline football. Adolph's and Sons, 40-30, Kennedy Drive, East Moline, 755-8427. For the finest Mexican food in the Quad Cities. Adolph's would like to congratulate Moline and the United Township on an outstanding football season. Adolph's and Sons, 4030 Kennedy Drive, East Moline, 755-8427. Total Fitness Center, 849 42nd Avenue, East Moline, 755-9216. The Total Fitness Center, with Bob Horn and his staff, will get you back in shape and put you on a program that'll get you where you want to be. The Total Fitness Center, 849 42nd Avenue, East Moline, 755-9216. Would like to congratulate the Panthers and the Maroons on an outstanding football season. For the biggest hit in town, swing over to Slutter's Pizza. Our diamond is located at 637 First Street in Silvis. The visitor's dugout is open from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Sunday through Thursday and until 11.30 p.m. Friday and Saturday. For dine-in or carry-out, try one of our fielder's choice specialties like taco, garden, or barbecue chicken. For a warm-up, have a piece of Slugger's bread or a frosty mug of your favorite refreshment. Hope to see you after the game at Slugger's, located in Silvis on 1st Street or call for a carry-out. 
The Eagles are flying over the Moline Maroons, 37 to seven. Moline has it, third and six at their own 39 yard line. Twin receivers near side. Jason Beard, the quarterback, looks to throw. He comes near side to throw, he does. Chad Kelly in and out of his hands, incomplete at about the 35 yard line of Leiden. And uh, now it's fourth down and six. You can see the frustration on the uh, maroon side of the football. Kelly came, tried to come down with that ball and he couldn't do it. And I think that's the first time all year I've, I've seen him get up and uh, look at the officials and ask uh, where's the call for pass interference. You never see him do anything like that. And now the Moline Maroons are gonna go for it as Jason Beard remains in there. Why not? On fourth and six. Well, the punting situation has been really, really shaky for the Maroons here tonight. Well, now the punting unit's coming in. Or are we seeing, well. Oh, wait. Oh. Yeah, Dan Burris is now coming in. They's gonna punt. All right, we're gonna run out of time. A timeout's been called by the Mole Maroons as they were running out of time. We're gonna take a quick break and we'll come back with the remainder of the game from Leiden High School. This is Moline football. Let's get this punting thing down right. Moline's gonna punt. Standing at his own 25 yard line, uh, fake. And getting the first down for the Moline Maroons on the carry, the up back. And gonna try and see here who that was. His eyes back looking at Dan Burris on that uh, carry. It was actually Bob Stroop. There you go. And Stroop gets to the 46 yard line. And Stroop picks up nine yards on the play for a first down. What do you got to lose? Moline's ninth first down of the game. Leiden, on the other hand, has just four. So it, it, it goes to show you what a defensive struggle we've had, mm -hmm. even though the score reads 37 7. There's a handoff. And that's the uh, first man through. And on the carry for the Moline Maroons was Bob Stroop. Stroop gets across the 45 yard line to about the 47, picks up a yard. About 11 minutes left here in the ball game. 37 to seven in favor of the Eagles. Final game. Possibly for the Moline Maroons, ever the optimist holding out. Twin receivers near side, wing to the near side, single back. Beard looks to throw, looks near side, he does. Oh, and he has, no, overshoots his receiver beyond the fingertips of his intended receiver, Chad Kelly. Boy, Kelly's giving it all. He's not going to leave anything out on the field tonight. That was the uh, very similar to the play we saw in the first half in which they picked up 33 yards on yep. that two-minute drill. Just let him about a, about a foot too long. And that's a 19th pass attempt for uh, Jason Beard here tonight. That's a lot. Especially when you're talking the Moline Maroons. Yeah. 10.38 left to go in the game. Moline trailing 37-7. Twin receivers near side. Wing to the near side, single back. Beard looks to throw, has some time, comes near side, pass overshoots his intended receiver, Scott Rice. That could have been intercepted. And for Jason Beard, ever since he threw that interception, which was returned 75 yards the other way by Alvarado, he's went over three passing. Mm. And 20 attempts. And now the Moley Maroons will have fourth down and nine, and do you go to the well again and fake it, or do you punt? Well, we'll see here in just a second. Well, they have sent back another uh, punter, the Moly Maroons have. And there's the punt, a decent punt. Holland picks it up at the 25-yard line between the uh, hash marks, comes back across the 40 to about the 44 yard line. And we have a flag on the play. Yeah, we got an illegal block in the back by one of the Eagles players, I believe. And 10-21 to go in the game. Yes, we do. It's against the Leiden Eagles. And they played a well-disciplined football game here tonight, just two penalties. Oh. And Tough to beat it. That's just their second penalty for 25 yards. Mm. Tough to beat that nut. Leiden, first and 10. 
at their own 18. First down, Lydon. 10.21 to go. Split out to the near side for Lydon is Mirandola. Handoff, second man through, and that's Shaw. And Shaw gets across the 20 to about the 23 yard line. Also what's rare here at uh, Lydon High School is how the, you have a yard marker at every five yards. Yes. Usually they have just 10, 20, 30, but here it's uh, every five yards. They have the numerals and it sometimes can confuse a person, but a gain of three yards on that play. On second and seven from the 21 yard line. In motion to the far side is Mirandola. And handoff to McMillan. McMillan gets across the 30 to about the 33 yard line. And a North Lake Leiden first down to the 33. Just keep them feet, put, picking them up, putting them down, picking them up. If they're not gonna tackle you, go for some yards. Gain of 13 on the play. First and 10 coming up. Nice game plan tonight by the Eagles. Receiver splits to the near side, I formation. Pitch back to Shaw, comes near side. He's across the 35, flag on the play, 40. And Shaw's dropped down at the 43, and on the tackle was uh, Grant McCauley. Again, this Shaw is a thousand yard rusher for the season. He's no and slouch. the flag is gonna go against the Eagles. So that'll back up Leiden. 10 yards for holding. This has been a relatively, uh, I can't even really say that. I was gonna say a relative mistake free game, but there's been a lot of penalties yeah. tonight, hasn't there? They mark it back to the 21 yard line. And well, just got the score there. If you heard it over our uh, from the PA announcer, home with Flossmoor's down 30 to nothing as well. So things no prettier there for Flossmoor's Vikings. On the keepers, Meadley from the 21 yard line on first and 20. And and it's now second down and about uh, one, 21 yards to go from yeah. the 20. Hmm. 30 to nothing. That's uh, the score, of course, from the uh, Barrington Flossmore game. This one here is yep. a 30 point differential 37 to 7 in favor of Leiden. And there's a handoff that is to Shaw. Shaw's to about the 25 yard line. And Shaw picks up five yards. I bet you there's a lot of Division I schools looking at Shaw. Shaw gained over 1,000 yards, 1,094 to be exact this season. Mm. Had 10 touchdowns. And yet the Moline defense has done a pretty good job on him here tonight. Though. Yeah, they Holding have. Holding to 44 yards so far. Receiver split right and left, eye formation. The quarterback is Mealy. Mealy, bootleg far side. Pass is complete across the 35, 40 into uh, just about Moline territory. Just about a yard shy of making the reception is Mark Mealy. That's a, that's a big advantage for being left-handed on that play. Then you don't have to turn back around and throw back across your body. It's a nice fluid motion. Only not quite set up for that play. And how many times do you want to guess that uh, those twins ran that play many, many times when they were younger? Oh, a lot. Gain of 12 on the play. Nice play. 22. 22. Leiden's first appearance in the playoffs in 18 years. And they'll be moving on to the second round. Between the tackles on the carry is McMillan. McMillan, uh, well, uh, rather on the carry 
for the Eagles. Uh, it was a number 46, and we do not have that player on our roster, but he get, does get into Moline territory to the 49-yard line, and uh, he picks up. Corbecki? Three yards on the play, actually four yards on the play. From the 49-yard line of Moline. Go, 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 go. There's a handoff, go, go. and that is Mark Mealy. Mealy down the far sideline across the 35-yard line, very close to the 30. They're just picking the defense apart now. That, that, that unit of Moline the, on their defensive side of the ball has been out there a long time in the second half. Needless to say, some of them are two-way players, too. And that's a gain of 19 yards on the run for Mark Mealy. Now from the 30-yard line of Moline, it's first and 10. Handoff, as we're starting to see some new players in there for Leiden High School, Mark Mealy on the carry. Yeah, you're gonna see uh, probably some wholesale substitutions, if not in this drive, uh, uh, for the next one, definitely. Mark Mealy on the carry, and he picked up two yards to the 28-yard line. Now second down and eight. Receiver split right and left, I formation. Matt Mealy still the quarterback, hands off, and that is Kornecki, mm -hmm. and Kornecki goes off left tackle and picks up about three yards on the play to the 25-yard line. About third and five now for the, for the Eagles. And right now they're just mainly working on running the clock. So from the 30-yard line, the 25-yard line of Moline, it's third down and five. High formation. And handoff, that's McMillan, the fullback. And we have a flag on the play. Yeah, that was thrown as soon as the ball was snapped, so and it could be a procedure. Let's see here. It's going to be a legal motion against Leiden High School. Oof. That backs them up five yards. Well, the Zebras are about the only thing that stopped them in the second half. And even that, that uh, end of it, there's four penalties against Leiden yeah. here in the... Uh, football game and a declined penalty sets up fourth down fourth and five as there was no gain on that play for the fullback McMillan split to the near side is Mirandola handoff that's Kornecki Kornecki looks to go off left tackle he's fighting for that first down marker and he's going to be a little bit short yeah you're going to be about two short two yards short on that play and Moline takes over on downs as the ball is marked at the 22-yard line, a gain of three for Kornecki on that play, and Moline takes over. Well, a moral victory there for the defense, stopping them on that drive. 3.57 left to go in the uh, game. We're going to take a quick 30-second break and be back with the remaining, remainder of this game. This is Moline football. Bergeron Appraisal Incorporated is located at 2129 16th Street, Moline. Specializing in residential appraisals certified in both Iowa and Illinois. Our qualified staff of seven appraisers can meet your residential appraisal needs. Bergeron Appraisal Incorporated would like to congratulate the Moline Maroons on a fine season. The Letterman, lettering and graphics, I'll come to you. Magnetic signs, logo reproduction, storefronts, fast service, banners, trucks, team and fleet discounts. Call Ken Townsman, owner, at 755-5854. And he would like to congratulate the Moline Maroons and the UT Panthers on a fine season. I think, I think it's been a good 
Back here at uh, Leiden High School, Chad Kelly on first and 10 from the 22 yard line was able to take it to the 25 and picks up three yards on the play. Second and seven from their own 25 yard line for the Maroons. Twin receivers near side, offset eye formation. Pitch back to Kelly coming near side across the 25 and brought down at the 30 and making the tackle for the Leiden Eagles as he uh, gets up was Holland. About a five yard, go ahead. And how Holland was a is able to keep his uniform clean I, and nobody else can <laughs> is beyond me. That is amazing. As he changed jerseys every time he comes to the sideline, makes you wonder. Gain of five on the play for Kelly. At the 30 yard line, we have second down and a, or the third down and about two. Wing to the far side, twin receivers near side. Jason Beard hands off to the uh, first man through. That's his fullback, Bob Stroop. And Stroop's gonna be about maybe a yard shy of a first down. That's where they spot it. Got a couple of new players in uh, the game for Moline here. I'm looking up. That's, uh, Looks like Mike Patterson. First down Moline on that carry by Stroop. As Stroop gains two yards. From the 32 yard line, Moline territory. Moline has the ball trailing by 30, 37 7, with straight up two minutes to go in the football game. Receiver split to the far side, wishbone formation, quarterback Jason Beard. Handoff, second man through. That is Alex Powell. And Powell gets it to about the 35 yard line. Tackle on the play by Johnson. And I want to thank the, the staff here at North Lake Leighton High, Leighton High School uh, for all their assistance here tonight. Outstanding. Excellent Appreciate facility. Yes, it is. Gain of three on that play for Alex Powell. Sets up now second down and seven for the Maroons at their own 35-yard line. Twin receivers, far side, offset eye formation. Jason Beard hands off to Kelly. Kelly between the tackles, fights for the 40-yard line. He's uh, brought down by the Eagles, Kowalshin. And Kowalshin is being looked at by several Division I schools. Down to one minute left here in the ball game. And the clock is running. Moline just basically running between the tackles, running the clock out. Gain of four on the play for Kelly, third down, and this could be the last play of the game. Well, Moline's still one of the top 32 teams in the 6A classification because they made the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Winning seven games this year. Just uh, sad to go out with a three-game losing streak, though. Start off 7-0 and and end up 7-3. and And Chad Kelly looks like he's going to take the last carry for the Moline Maroons. Yep, I think that's going to be it. season. And Kelly gets to the 41-yard line. Picks up two yards as that's going to set up fourth down and about a yard. And they're not even going to run a play. They may run. No, I don't no. know if they're going to get another play off or not. As it's down to three seconds, two, and time has run out here at Leiden High School in North Lake, Illinois, as the Moley Maroons have gone down to the Eagles. 37 to 7. Coming up next, it's our.